Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty. Well, bits of me are Tony Haggerty, I think. Yeah, kind of hanging together today. But hey, there you go. The show must go on. A Haggerty 10 Twitter handle, as you know by now. And I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW and Aidan McDonald at Aidan C. McDonald. Gentlemen, how are you doing? You'll be better than me. I <laughs> like the sounds of it, but hey, there you have it. Well, I don't know so much, Tony. Um, <laughs> I, think I've got a, I think I've got a wee bit of PTSD, right? And I'll, I'll tell you why. My okay. wife will be like, what's he saying here? Um, I was working right, working right up until the start of that Man City game last night. Ah. But I really wanted to watch some of it. Really wanted to watch it. Uh, but I also wanted a bath, right? I wanted a weird, nice relaxing bath. So what I decided today was, <laughs> right, you know what? I'll shove it on the laptop and I'll prop the laptop up next to the bath so I don't miss it. So, oh, no, right, everybody's no. a winner, best of both worlds. Forgetting I've got an 11 month old. Uh, <laughs> she yeah. started walking, as you've seen yesterday. She walked in here after we came off air. Um, mm-hmm. She comes in a wee wonder what's going on, what's going on. Mm-hmm. Proceeds to push said laptop right into the bath. Oh, no. Fully in it. I watched it sink as if it was a Titanic. Honestly, absolute carnage erupted. Woke up still thinking about it. So if I start to look a wee bit, wee bit vacant on here, you'll know why. <laughs> Pretty vacant. Honestly. I think, me, I think that's me most days, to be fair. <laughs> I'm Pretty vacant, but there you go. Morning, everybody. We'll get to Celtic in a second. I'll just draw your attention to the strap line running along the bottom. We've always got a deal for you. And you can enjoy four months of access, unlimited access to everything we right on the website for a pound, guys. Plus, new subscribers will also receive that wonderful limited edition bespoke A3 artwork by renowned football artist made by Frankie. All for the click of a button. www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Try that again, guys. www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. There's the deal there and there's the artwork by Frankie made by Frankie, as you can see on the screen. And we're also big up to our new sponsors, Seneca. The Celtic Way Morning Briefing is now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca are the number one hair transplant company in Europe and offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. And we thank them for their sponsorship. Now, gentlemen, the focus of attention turns to the Scottish Cup tomorrow. Now, Sean, you've got a family feud going on now, haven't you? Because <laughs> I'm a, my dad, my father-in-law. Your relatives that support the opposition tomorrow, Green yes, Up Martin. Uh, some and, of them uh, do, aye. Indeed, so a, a family at war, and even a family at war indeed with your wee daughter throwing things and back <laughs> and all that. And you just... On that note, Derek Crawford came in saying, oh, no, nightmare. But Jason Lee basically thinking the real nightmare is that he's now got an image of me in a bath. So, there we go. <laughs> Can't win them all, Jason. Can't win them all. Um, I know, we've got a wee, uh, wee family feud. My, fa- my, my dad, my father-in-law. Um, but, listen, <laughs> you're saying it'll be a war. I'm, I'm thinking it'll be a, a very one-sided affair. Uh, a uh-huh. one-sided battlefield. But we'll see. There you go, Aidan. There's confidence and overconfidence there. I think Sean's, you know, reckon he'll be making those phone calls to the father and father in law <laughs> tomorrow night or evening to give it. Well, there you have it. It was the scoreline was what it was. Aidan, do you see foresee problems for Celtic in this tie tomorrow? Yeah, obviously, you always need to be careful because cup games are one-off matches, but I don't think so. Just the fact that it's ho- at home, where domestically Celtic have such a strong record, I don't think they've lost domestically since Postacoglu came in. The only sort of domestic loss... Uh, sorry, there's been a couple of domestic losses, but no domestic losses at home. It's the only sort of cup domestic loss was obviously the semi-final against Rangers last year at Hamden, but they've been so strong uh, at Celtic Park, I just think... Overall, they'll probably have too much for Morton tomorrow on the day. Sean, you've been getting that meme of do you hear me scoring at Celtic Park in the league? A couple, aye. aye. You've been getting that kind of sent to your, your mobile phone and stuff just to remind you that yep. it's not always a foregone conclusion. No, it's not, but of course, FA Ambrose gave away the penalty that day, so presumably he'll, he'll be giving Celtic one back tomorrow. <laughs> um, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I think. Um, 
it's worth pointing out that although that is the game that probably pops into a lot of people's minds, even Celtic fans, not just necessarily Morton fans, um, since then, they've, they've met twice and Celtic have won both ties 3-0 um, quite comfortably as well. Uh, and I always remember that that Morton game in, in terms of Big Van Dyke ended up up front and everything. <laughs> that day, they, they hit the post, they hit the bar. It was it was 1-0, obviously, but it was going on 3-1 Celtic. And, and uh, obviously, you can't legislate for a, a penalty. Um, but nonetheless, uh, that, that is a game that's probably popping into a lot of people's heads. I can't see that necessarily happening again. You can't. You never know. Aiden's right. You never know in a cup. A cup tie is a cup tie. But for me, there's there's just logically too much in Celtic's favour. Not just the form that they're in, but the form Morton are in because they're not in the form they were when this draw was made. Um, they're now sixth in the championship where they were second before, and I know that's a, a league that's kind of you can win a couple and go up and lose a couple. You go down. They went unbeaten in ten before December, but now haven't won in five. Lost three of those as well. Albeit one was in penalties. And crucially, Tony, and this is where I always think right there's, there's no getting away for this they've not kept a clean sheet since october the 28th you're not going to keep one at parkhead and that kind of form for me that that's the way i, I always think about the, the opposition clean sheets uh i just don't see it happening at parkhead um i think i mean we'll skip we'll, we'll not go to the score predictions yet but if anybody remembers i already made my score prediction when i always made uh, so i need to stick with what i said back then but we'll, we'll come to that later on um Interestingly, see when I was looking at the, 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 the kind of form or the, the head-to-heads uh, that people on Twitter will know, I usually tweet us out before a game anyway, but um, they never met at all in the first decade of the millennium, right? Which is what you might think, I will. They were in Morton were third division and second division and all that, but they've, never, they've not been in the top flight at all since whatever it is, the 80s. So that's pro- that's neither here nor there. But they never met, since, never met in the first decade of this millennium, but met four times in the 2010s. Which is just oh. a, wee, a wee quirk. Obviously, Morton won one, Celtic won three. Yes, indeed. That's, uh, yeah, that's a strange quirk, that, isn't it? The way these things work, Aidan. But they're meeting again on Saturday. Hmm. And, yeah, uh, I'm just talking about previous Morton games, I believe. Was it against Morton that Marvin Comper made his one and only appearance for Celtic? I yeah. feel they could have been in a cup game somewhere. I feel uh, that may have been one of the 3 0 games Sean was talking about. Aye, sure. I think it was a bit later that he was there, so I Marvin Comper, remember him? Celtic legend Martin Comper. But yeah, it is oh, a, yeah. a it is a interesting, obviously, that they didn't meet for a while and then there was quite a lot of games. But yeah, the team just need to be professional and, and I'm sure they will be given the way they've sort of operated under Arge and particularly at home, the, the home record has been so strong domestically. I know obviously there was a few draws in there last season, but the majority have been wins. So yeah, I, I would expect that to continue tomorrow. I'm going to flick up this comment because we've been laughing about it since yesterday. <coughs> He's uh-huh. okay. You you guys can tell them. I, I was in. I, I always create the, the article in advance, and uh, we wait until the press, and then we fill in more, more selections. But sometimes I take a wee punt and put in what I'm provisionally thinking. But there's about 16 names in my team that I'm thinking because I can't. I can't narrow it down. Uh, we'll come. We'll come to the like, not the whole team, but different positions, and you'll see why. I've thought myself right into a wee transfer. I don't, I don't know who I'm picking. Uh, I thought I had some nailed on, and then I've, I've, I've put it dash. Maybe him, maybe him. But Sean's gone for the Oasis Celtic selection. Uh, Aiden, I definitely maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he's got ones in black that I think are certain starters, and then he's got others not in bold, which I think as he said there's about sixteen players in these eleven. So, if, if Ange plays 16 players against Morton, I'm sure Celtic can get a result, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so. I'm, I'm fairly confident of that. Uh, but, yeah. And this is um, sorry, Tony. Ke- Kevin Ferrier just coming in here saying, have I got a pint on who wins uh, tomorrow? They wouldn't take that bet. There's no way they would take that bet. <laughs> uh, Derek Crawford, very, very sensibly saying you need to tread carefully, Sean, because you need babysitters. They'll yes. probably be watching this going, aye, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well... You know, you can't legislate for kiddies coming in as we saw we Sophia when she stormed the Bastille yesterday. <laughs> it's it absolutely brilliant. I love that. That was a that was a highlight of my day to be fair. But there you go. I hope she's well. Uh, yes, indeed. Now Aiden predicted elevens. It's uh, we're gonna to have to do it and we're gonna to have to make a mug of us. I think myself and Sean crashed and burned badly when we picked the team mm. against Alawa. Last year, didn't we, Sean? At this point, 
We did um, die, and to be honest, I look back at that thinking in my mind, probably because we got it so wrong, thinking in my mind that he made seven or eight changes, but then he made five, which isn't as many as what, I, what I've yeah, come to remember in my head. I remember him making about nine. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. but aye, so th there's an element of the alloy to it, I think, aye. Are you, Aidan, do you think there'll be lots of rotation? I think he's already said that a couple might not actually make it, like the likes of Cameron Carter Vickers, yeah. people like that, you know, so... You thinking Kobayashi stays in situ, that kind of thing? Yeah, I think that's probably the sort of easiest one I would say to try and put that to that Kobayashi, I think he'll play again. I think you want to get him a run in the team now, ideally. Obviously, when, when Carter Vickers does come back fit, for the Dundee night game, probably by the looks of it, then it might be there'll be a decision to be made, but I think you want to get him more minutes. I also think Iwata will start as well. Ooh. Um, but right, okay. I think outside of those two, it would be quite hard to pick, really. I think because I was even going to say Joe Hart's Ooh. probably a definite. I don't want to give too much away, obviously, but uh, I, I'm well, on the fence about that as well. Why don't we take a few positions then, right? Right. right. So, Aidan mentioned Joe Hart there. Now, I said the other day, I don't know what's going on with Ben Seagrass because he's not been mentioned in any way, shape, or form, or made any squads this this year yet. I know we're all twenty right. days in, but he's not made them. Um. If he were to be, like we know he's available, I think he would play him because he played him in the early stages of the League Cup. But failing that, do you really think it's going to be Scott Bain or is it just going to be straight back to right? Seagrass not there, so it's Joe Hart and Bain will be on the bench. Because that's, that's the way I'm probably leaning. Yeah, I think it'll be Joe Hart. But as somebody told me, I spent 10 minutes justifying well, why Burnaby would play the other night. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he was rotated or rested or what you like, so... You can never tell when man's, but I, I am, I'm inclined to think that along the same line, Sean, that it will be Joe Hart. Um, he hasn't been mentioned until, unless he mentions uh, him today. I, I'm mm. curious if anybody wants to ask him, because they might not want to use up a question asking about the backup keeper, which is probably why he's not been asked specifically yet. But <laughs> um, we haven't gone on with the, the transfer market, or maybe not gone on with the transfer market, but I'm just very, very curious. Like, what, Where is he? Is he all right? Like, <laughs> um, yeah. but I think that that's for keeper. I think it will go hard. I don't think it will be Bain, um, mostly because I think there will be a lot of changes elsewhere. So probably keep the the guy that's been at the back for the majority of the time, unless Seagrass, um, unless Seagrass there. But right back, I mean, we're not we're not going position by position, right? So we'll just go defence, right? But is it surely Ante Alston's got to get a wee bit of game time here? Oh, surely. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. No, no debate there, Aidan. Surely, aren't they? Alston, that's it. Fine. Uh, well, do you think, would you think, Aidan? Do you think, I mean, Juranovic and Johnston have both played in the last couple of games, and Ralston's back from injury but not played? I think it's probably a good opportunity for Ralston to get some minutes. If Juranovic should maybe, like, you know, played every single game since he came back from the World Cup, like, say, I know he came on against Rangers, but he'd been there. And then Johnson hadn't really played. He only came on as a sub. I would have thought this would be a good game for him to bed in. But he's, he's already played three matches, hasn't he? So mm -hmm. I think it would be fine for Ralston to start. Uh, I think it's probably left-back. It's probably the more interesting one, to be honest. I don't. I, th I think he's made it clear he's going to start Bernabe. Would you think, Tony? Yeah, I yeah. said Bernabe would come back Aye. in, didn't he? I'm sure he said those words, Bernabe would come back in. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident that he'll play well, that'll be this time. I'll not spend 10 minutes justifying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Centre-backs, you, you kind of mentioned he'd already said Carter Vickers would be fit, but he would probably not be playing him anyway. Yeah. He might change his mind. Um, I think yeah. given they kept a clean sheet the other night, he probably won't. The question I would have, I suppose, is, one, do you put Kobayashi in for the second game in a row? I'm, I'm thinking yes. But then who do you partner him with? Because Welsh hasn't played in ages. Starfield was all right. But Starfield was good at right centre-back. With him the other day, do you continue that? that that's the kind of questions I'm thinking about. Centre back, Maurice Jens, not even mentioned. What about Jens? Yeah, I was just about to say, what about Jens? Do you think he'll pair him with a different, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, defensive partner? That's the thing. You've got Jens and Welsh <laughs> there, and also that's uh, that's that's what uh, we're, he was going to have to decide, isn't he? Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the two of them kept a clean sheet the other night. Starfield and Kobayashi, and he might. Yellow jersey, yeah, he might. Also, but you know, you see other guys try to get some game time, and this is an ideal opportunity mm -hmm. to rotate and give them game time. So, 
you might see somebody like Welsh come in because obviously they're listening to offers for Welsh, aren't they? They're, yeah, aye. They're willing to listen to offers for Welsh, so maybe a wee showcase for him. Former Morton Lone <clears> player <throat> as well, so if he plays, he'll score, I think. But Yeah, so you, you, you never know. And again, that's why you've got 16 players and you're predicting 11. Yes, <laughs> I know, I know. I've got Mikey Johnston flying back in for a start, I think. <laughs> um, the midfield, right? The midfield thing with me, initially, I, th- I mean, yesterday I made it, I, I, I backed myself into Turnbull's going to start is what I've said, so I need to say that now because I said that yesterday. Um, but beyond that, I don't, I can't quite go with Aiden and say what is going to start because the way that I was supposed to call mentioned these, the way that he was getting up to speed the other day made me think it might be a sub appearance rather than a start. And then the question is, you've got Hatate, who's probably due a rest because that would be 21 successive games in it. Um, competitive games, anyway, competitive start. O'Reilly, Moy and McGregor. And despite the fact that I'm forever saying McGregor needs to be rested at some stage and Morton at home in the fourth round of the Scottish Cup seems like the perfect opportunity, I'm thinking he's going to start him. And then he'll maybe hope to, hope to take him off after 60 minutes. So you can see why it's 16 players I've got in my start. Now, <laughs> he'll start Cal Mack. I have no doubt about that. He did set his stall out now, though. So, is he expensive, McGregor? Is McGregor moving forward? I want to say, I do think McGregor might actually play, but he might move him a bit further forward. Right, okay, all right. So, you reckon the water's going to come in in that number six role? Yeah, I know. I I just think purely because it's a good opportunity for him to start a game. I know Sean was talking about him still getting up to speed, which that could, you would say, that could mean a. Sub appearance, and I probably will be just watching and Andrew's press her closely today before I make a final decision on that, yeah. just in case he does like confirm, uh, you know, he's maybe struggling not struggling with his fitness, but still just building his way in in terms of training and that. But I think it would be a good opportunity. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't expect him to play 90 minutes, but even if he was to play like 60 odd minutes and start, just get that under his belt, and then I think he probably will just. Even though it is a good opportunity to leave McGregor out fully, uh, he probably will play him. I would imagine he will either feature instead of Awata or if Awata is playing, I still think McGregor will also be in there. So, yeah, we'll see. There's a few comments, Tony, mentioning uh, the erstwhile Celtic midfielder, Yusuke Idiguchi. I don't see that at all. Um, people saying it could be his last game because of the transfer rumours and stuff. Andrew Galea came in saying, why has nobody asked about Idiguchi? What's the deal? You're right, nobody's really asked, but I think like he was obviously injured and he was back in training. I think it's just as simple as he's not quite good enough to break into a match day squad because there's a lot of players in front of him. Aaron Moy, Andrew will know he's he's Aaron Moy's biggest fan. He he has forced his way into the, the starting eleven reckoning week on week now. Matt O'Reilly's still Matt O'Reilly. Rayo Hatati's still Rayo Hatati. David Turnbull's back from injury. I just think it's as simple as he's just not good enough to make the squad. It's a real shame because this is the game that done for the Gucci, wasn't it? With uh, the Alwa uh, against Alwa, and just when you were maybe hoping to see what he could bring to the table, and mm-hmm. I feel from that way because he said it's just been bad luck, and then obviously, as you say, the forum of all the other midfielders has just pushed them further and further down that pecking order. Well, and we'll probably never really get to see what the Gucci will bring because I would, mm. I would think it's safe to say, or fair enough assumption that he might. They might part company sooner rather than later, maybe this one. So, and it's uh, it's it's a pity because I, I think you maybe look on at the other guys that came from Japan and get a real chance to to make their mark and make an impact. Aiden and just rough justice for him the fact that he came off a you know there was a really bad tackle at the time which wasn't addressed. No, no, yeah, I know he was he was unlucky in that stage. I mean, it's not like he was playing and he was constantly pulling up. A hamstring and it was me nibble seeing there it was a really like bad challenge that sort of just came out of nowhere and then he never really recovered from that so that is a shame it's not like celtic signed but an injury from player or anything really it was just if <laughs> he came in and suffered after a really bad challenge and just couldn't really get it going so pre-season yeah, you also get, get minutes in pre-season as well and then get injured as well yeah. but um <clears throat> that alo attack was one of the first times you kind of saw as post the coglu Almost breaking the fourth wall and, and criticising the an official for inaction and stuff because he, he, he's made a point of trying not to do that kind of thing, uh, but it did go on on kind of unpunished on on unmentioned yeah by the officials in different things. But I've put Stephen Moore's comment up there. Aiden McCarthy getting a game. 
against a summer story with him. He's played centre mid, which right now is well stocked. And, and yeah, I can I see mean, that. he he's played slightly more than Adeguchi, only slightly, but made a lot of squads last year without getting on. Um, yeah. He yeah. is back in training and stuff. Do you think there's a chance? Or just he may be on the bench. Amount so. of midfield quality there. He, he might be on the bench if Ange is resting some players. I mean, I'd imagine. I know I was talking about McGregor, but I'd imagine out of sort of Hitati, O'Reilly, mm -hmm. uh, Moy, etc. I'd imagine there'll be at least maybe one, if not a couple of them, maybe not on the bench. So there, there could be an opportunity for McCarthy to get a sub up here, but I'd be very surprised if he just came completely out of the cold and was starting, to be honest. The yeah, irony is, he always mentions McCarthy, doesn't he? Uh, I think he's a good guy about the dressing room, yeah. judging by the, the kind of Celtic TV player mm -hmm. features and stuff. And he, he does some of them, but he also gets mentioned quite a bit. Uh, seems quite popular, so that maybe that maybe plays into it as well. There's maybe a presence in the dressing room, uh, so he's in his mind. But in terms of actual game time, I, I can't. I, I just can't see it. I don't. I don't think, especially with the signing of Iwata, he had that into the, the players that we've already mentioned, and it's just so so hard. And it actually leads me on, not necessarily a centre mid specifically, but Charlie McGarvey. Going back to something I mentioned quite a bit now. He says, will any of the B team players ever get a game? They must see their options is very limited if they want first team football. I agree with that. Um, as I've said numerous times over the last few months, I just the depth that Celtic are building at first team level is brilliant. It's something obviously last season, Tony, that was like marking a catchphrase. Yeah, yeah. squad depth, squad depth, and all that. They've got the squad depth now, but obviously a byproduct to that is that unless you're already in that in the reckoning, it's very, very hard for a young B team player to actually make that breakthrough, to get the chance to even make that breakthrough. You're probably looking at the kind of cameo that Rocco Vata got now and again for, for a lot of them. Uh, the exception being, as I said, get into that, um, uh, get into the game where there, there were potentially going to be no right backs um, and Hatate played. Although he played and got man of the match and scored, and there's no, you can't you can't get away from that. I was still thinking, when otherwise are you going to have a chance to bring in a young right back? Now, obviously, that doesn't legislate. Maybe he, he thinks they're just not good enough yet, or that kind of stuff. But for me, that that was a, one of the only times where you're going to go right, if not now, when for a for a young player to actually get the nod. And another situation could be, and I've actually got a piece in the works about this. It could be Yakimakis if he goes. There is no other striker yet. Been brought in, although we'll come to a, we'll come to the latest transfer rumor about that transfer transfer report about that. Uh, so I I think Charlie's got a, a very good point, and f again fourth round cup tie against a second tier opposition would tend to lend itself to giving a youngster a chance. But there's so many first team level quality players that probably need game time as well. It just makes it that much harder to, to bridge the gap. It's like the dilemma we have in the morning briefing, Aidan, to give youngsters a chance like yourself, you know what I mean, and, and bring into the first team fold. We, we have that dilemma every morning, but uh, yes. Nicely done, Tony, I like that. Young, young, lad, young lad, showing a lot of promise, so yeah. Yellow jersey, um, kept his place in the squad. So, see, if I, no, I mean, for scouting I, past midfield, Tony, go to forwards for me. Go to forwards, right, without, you don't necessarily need to pick your three, but I can't shake a feeling that it's not going to be Yakimakis. Right. I don't know why, because he said if he's fit, he will. But I just kind of shake a feeling that there's something going to happen where it's, he's, he's not quite recovered from his knock or whatever it was. Uh, I, I'm, I, again, I'm totally getting myself, backing myself right into corners with these things and doing riddles and, and mazes. But I'm, I've ended up, I think, going... Uh, I'm tempted Haxabanovich Maida through the middle um, and Abada. But then one of my pals went, what about Forrest in his game time? So I'm going to stick Forrest in as well then. We'll go with 17 players from the start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, you know my thoughts on Yaki Mac is that. Mm -hmm. I still don't think that it's as cut and dry. But I, I, I've got a feeling that he might stay. I really mm -hmm. do. I've said it all along. I've been consistent in that. And I just don't see... I don't see the kind of panic in Ange about the whole... Jack and Mac is leaving situation. So and I and I think this is ideal if he is going to play him, because he said the other night he would have featured if he wasn't injured. But he said also as well that he's not sure if he would shake it off for Saturday, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Something like that, didn't he? Did he say that too? He did basically well, he kinda implied I that, that he should be alright for the weekend. Um so I suppose we'll just see. And again, he definitely was at the game, like there's no there's no doubt there's no doubt that he was yeah. anywhere other than Park Heading. Uh, in, in Wednesday night, so I, I've got a feeling like you that 
Jack and Marcus will play. You know, so I, I just and but then again, he likes Forest for these kind of games as well, doesn't he? Mm. And then you've got the return on Haksabanovich, who I thought might have featured the other night from the start. So another one who good chance to give him game time. So yeah, the Haksa Forest and Maida striker Derek Crawford. Is that? You, no, you said a badder, didn't you? Uh, I, but I've, I don't know, maybe Forrest as well, that's the thing. Um, no, so. I've got a couple of things after me saying about the B team there. Uh, Derek Crawford again saying Dawson's in fire with the B team. And uh, Derek Smith saying striker, how's Joey Dawson playing? Yeah. He bring him in for Saturday. I don't imagine he'll bring him in for Saturday, but that is nail on head. That is what my, that's who my piece is about. That's who mm. my piece is about. Um, Joey think? Dawson, seven goals in the last four games. 16 goal the- contributions in 16 Lowland League games as well, so... If you are going to rotate, as you said, this is the ideal opportunity, Aiden, for somebody like Joey Dawson to come into the squad, be on the bench and maybe come on and get some minutes. Mm. Yeah, I think there's a chance maybe a couple of the B team players such as Dawson, Vata, etc. could be on the bench and they might they might come on. I, I don't know if I could see any of them starting, but the fact that they're obviously doing quite well, Vata in particular also got some minutes against Hibs. Could be a good opportunity if he's on the bench and you maybe are starting either Maida or Abada through the middle to give Kyogo a rest that then when one of them comes off, you know, 60, 65 minutes, you then put Vata or Dawson on and they get like a good 20 plus minutes. That could be a kind of good way to do it. I, I think there is a chance there'll be a couple of AB team players on the bench, but I, I don't think I could see any of them start. Yeah, now you spoke about strikers, Sean, and the reason you alluded to strikers was there's reports in Korea saying that oh try to try to <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh oh young you yeah is that yep. how we're saying his name yeah i think that's how we're saying his name you know that the move to celtic could be afoot because he's he's chapped the manager's door four times and pleaded to come to celtic which is a good sign in itself very good and sign man, eh? and the manager has said he could he could no longer break his heart because celtic kept up in the up in the offer so watch out for that one Korean newspapers and media reporting that Joe Hyung Yoo could be on his way to Celtic sort of saying quoting figures of three million quid Sean mm-hmm. everybody putting two and two together saying well if he comes in Jack and Marcus is a certainty to leave but mm-hmm. I certainly don't see it like that at this minute in time the eternal optimist about big Jack and Marcus here oh, yeah I, think, I am uh, I have been yeah but- to be honest, you're only going by what has actually been said by the people involved, and yeah. what has actually been said is that he's in Celtic's team, he's part of the setup, and all that kind of stuff. So until yeah. you hear otherwise, you're fair enough to, to hold that view. I think we, with with O, it's um, he's a uh, 21 years old, two on blue wings, six foot one, which a lot of people will like to hear because a lot of people like a, a wee bit of physical presence up there. He does like a defensive duel. Passes are all right. Uh, passes are well enough does okay in there for a center forward a couple of percentage points lower than than jack Kamakis in terms of aerial duels and stuff but when i was looking at him slightly uh, only briefly for this um he has played out in the wing both wings but it's only like 10 percent of his senior kind of top level minutes he's played them the overwhelming majority as a striker and while he's played as a striker he's got a goal contribution every 188 minutes which is something that's just just over every two matches but you'd want that to improve obviously but you've got to remember he's only 21. Um, yeah. So there's plenty of improvement there. Uh, the other thing is that, I suppose, what you mentioned there, the logical question is, if they do bring in a striker and there is a fee like they're talking about, then does that mean that there is an admission that maybe Yakimakis won't be there? Yeah, I mean, that's a big question now, Aidan, isn't it? That Celtic have to answer and, you know, time's running out in terms of the transfer window at the end of this month. It's going to come to a conclusion one way or the other yeah as i think we'd obviously kind of said i think it was even before the transfer window opened that if celtic did sign another striker uh, we would kind of almost want them to add somebody could come in and challenge yakimakis and kyogo even if both of them stayed obviously since then the way it's developed with yakimakis i'm kind of of the opinion now that if they bring in another striker in this window in particular it's probably because he's moving on I think in terms of the player himself, the sort of age range is quite interesting. That does show that he does have a good ceiling for improvement, like Sean said. And his stats are all right, but, you know, given he is still a young player, there's plenty of sort of space for him to 
improve and that's sort of kind of age range that I think it's good for Celtic to buy in. Obviously you want you get some players that are a bit experienced which Ange has bought, you know, uh, Kyogo was uh, I think twenty six, Aaron Moy obviously is a bit older, but I think it's also good to be getting maybe slightly younger players in as well. So yeah, we've also need to see how it develops. But I, I think if he does come in, Tony, I know your boy Yakimakis I think he could be he could be on the road out, unfortunately. Yeah, who, like, between the two of you, who do you think is more is the more optimistic? Because you've consistently says about Yakimakis, Tony. Aiden has been very, very optimistic about Juranovic not actually going anywhere. There's yeah. now three right backs. Will there be three strikers before before there's uh, before the window's over? I think so. Yeah. I think we'll be I, hope, I hope so. I'd like there to be three strikers, but I, I think um, maybe it's what my about the three I'm more though, optimistic what, about your Anne Witch thing. You're less or you're more? I'm more optimistic more about your Anne Witch thing. Just the way it's progressed in the last week or so with Yakimakis. Eh, but look, eh, that, that could all change to be fair. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll end up with three right backs and three strikers. I mean, the squad's strong for this sort of yeah. last sort of four or five months. Yeah. You know my thoughts on that, Sean? Well, Good Derek's player. coming in to shatter both of your dream series. Oh, come both on, Derek. Both will be gone, unfortunately. <laughs> and Beach Boy says it as well. Both will go in the last few days. Well, that's that's the thing, isn't it? We've got that. Uh, there's 11 days to go, but yeah, the, the last two or three days will decide mm. what will happen, really, because that's when it all kind of kicks in, doesn't it? Club Paul, uh, Paul Martin, no relation, I don't think, um, mm. saying... Um, Basically, Kenna backing you up, Tony, saying that the yeah. two three strikers would be more required than three right backs. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I, yeah, that, that, is, that is right, to be fair. Well, like, uh, I, I'm a firm believer in that. So uh, if we sell Juranovic, I've said before, we went gone on record, if we sell Juranovic, I wouldn't be too perturbed. Because mm-hmm. I like the look of Alistair Johnson and uh, Anthony Ralston gives you everything whenever he's asked. So um, I'm fine with that. I, I kind of. I'd made my peace with Juranovic leaving, let's put it that way. But uh, yeah, it's been quiet on that, hasn't it, for a few days. But it has, so, I, and, and Monta signing that right back as well, yeah. Yeah, it's all going to explode again in the next week or so, isn't it, when when it, you know the transfer window clock really does start ticking down. So then we'll see whether Celtic want to do business for Juranovic or, or Jack and Marcus. But I don't know. There's something... In my head, saying that Jack and Marcus is going to stay. I don't know. I've been pretty consistent about it. If he goes, then I'll be pretty disappointed. But uh, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know, something lurking in my head saying he, he's going to stay. Certainly to the end of the season. After that, maybe he'll leave then. But we'll see it all pan out in the next 11 days, Sean. Well, I. Um, before we wrap up with score predictions, I'm going to mention, Tony, you kind of talked about it yesterday. Uh, the 16 Celtic. Yeah fundraising volunteers that are in the Arctic Circle as we speak. Yeah. Uh, the piece that you mentioned yesterday is now live on the site, so I'll put it in there, and it's free to read because it's to do with charity. Um, and there's a Just Giving link at the bottom as well, but it sounds hellish. It sounds like it would be the end of me, Tony, to be honest with you. You know, I'm I'm naturally quite cool. Tony seen me at Hamden. I'm done up Phil Parker, bonnet, heated heat pads, all sorts, long johns, two pairs of socks, everything. Um, and that's just at Hamden in the press box. <laughs> uh, so 65 kilometres of frozen landscapes, frozen rivers, camping outside and, and with just a, just a tent and all that, Tony. Um, uh, it's yeah. not for me, but they're out there doing it at the moment and you've written about it. It's your idea of hell, isn't it? <laughs> uh, we're in Rovinyemi in Finland uh, doing a three-day Arctic trek with conditions supposedly to reach like, like between minus 10 and minus 20, so I mm-hmm. think you would suffer big time, Sean. Give me hell before you give me the Arctic Circle. <laughs> At least hell's warm. <laughs> I don't know about you, Aidan, if you could cope with that. But Tom Boyd's here as well, uh, club ambassador and former Celtic skipper. He's there. And as I said the other day, I found out one of my best friends is there as well. And he never even cracks a light about it. But yeah, there's a, a link to the article there. Go and read it. It's, it's worth it. And big up to them and a round of applause for them, to be fair, because it's a... Uh, Worthwhile causes, Aiden, that they're doing it for. Yeah, definitely. I think, to be honest, I'd probably finished off as well. I mean, I'm absolutely freezing today. Never mind the uh, <laughs> Arctic Circle minus twenty, to be honest. But uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's for a good cause, of course. So anybody should donate if they can. Maybe it's a useful bright thing, and 
can I used to the cold, you know, because we strong were immune systems in we were, uh, we were in the higher ground than we always, yeah, yeah. Although, yeah, my immune system packed in, I think, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> it probably wouldn't have been a good time for me to go there, but there you have it. But no, I, I say it's a, it's a admirable thing that they're doing, and good luck to them. And I hope everything is well and they raise a lot of money, so yeah, uh, big up to them and well done, Sean. Putting the they say the articles in the, the link said if you want to have a read it. Nice one. Well, we move on to Morton, Sean. Yep. You're going to uh, annoy some of your members of your family, no doubt, from tomorrow. <laughs> hopefully, um, hopefully, aye. If, if the predictions, we'll do the score predictions, eh? Mm-hmm. Do you want to go first, Aidan? Or will I go first? Will Sean? Hey, go aye, first? I, can, I, can I mean, I, I've already said what mine would be back in back in November when the draw was made. So right, You want to remind um, everybody what you said, Sean? Uh, well, I was going to say eagle-eyed or whatever the hearing equivalent of that is. <laughs> uh, viewers and listeners will remember back when the draw was made, I, I said it at the time, even though Morton were in great form, uh, that the last two times they'd played, it was very comfortable 3 0 wins. So I was going to stick with that. I was very tempted to come on here and say, I've doubled it, I've doubled it, but I've not. Uh, I'll stick with, I'll stick with 3 0. Aiden? Uh, I think it will be a wee bit more comfortable than that. I'll go for 5 0, just because. Uh, just actually after that performance the other night, really, from Celtic, I, I know there'll be probably quite a few changes to the team, but after maybe a couple of not bad performances before, because obviously they won both games against Kilmarnock, but maybe not quite as good as the previous game used to. That was a top performance against a team, obviously, that Celtic previously had struggled against, so I'll go five. You doing I'll it, Tony? Go. Oh, do it, do it. <laughs> do I'm going to go four, actually. Oh. Four. So there's a three, four, and a five now. Sorry to disappoint your father and father in law, Sean. Guys, it's it's a tough ask uh, to go to Celtic Park, but good luck. Absolute chaos ensues when F.A. Ambrose scores in the first couple of minutes. <laughs> in which goal? That's the question. In which goal? Uh, what net? That's uh, so. But yeah. So yeah, that's three now, four now, five now. Most of the guys in here ranging from three now to six now to eight now. I think somebody put in ten now. Yeah, there's yeah Gary McDowell, ten now. now. No, yeah, yeah. Kevin Ferrier, Dean Hans says we never stop. Seven Zip says Derek Smith. I want um, to put, put this in just because I, I made a video here, but genuinely, I, I think Effie Ambrose was a really good player for Celtic for the, for the most part. That Juventus game aside, um, and uh, Alan Wood says he hopes he gets a good cheer at Parkhead. Yeah, I'm sure he will because I think he was a popular guy as well, wasn't he? You know, mm-hmm. one of the players. best celebrations I've got to one, say. One and off the field, uh, yeah, indeed. He's still indeed. doing it, by the way. I know, and, and also, I, and I'll, I, it kind of goes under the radar a wee bit, but Effie Ambrose played in that side that beat Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was in the defence, I think he was alongside Kelvin Wilson, wasn't he? Kelvin Wilson, I had a stormer that night, Kelvin Wilson. So, you know, and alongside others, so yeah, you know, it's when you pick out a lot of moments with Effie Ambrose, yeah, everybody will talk about Juventus and other times when he made clangers, but he, he had some good games for Celtic as well. You know, and, he, uh, and the Barcelona game being one of them where everything came together that night, didn't it? And Listen, Adam Matthews at left back that night's the one that sticks out for me. Yeah. I thought he was phenomenal. Out of position, up against the best right wing in the world. I know Messi was a false nine at that point, but Danny Alves is arguably the best right wing back yeah. ever. And I thought Adam Matthews was superb. So, yeah. so you have, you know, so I do hope he gets a, a cheer, a big cheer tomorrow. I'm sure he will. The Celtic fans oh. like to give returning uh, players a good welcome, don't they? So, and I'm yeah. sure you'll enjoy it. I'm sure you'll and, and what you're guaranteed with Effie is you're guaranteed something with him, aren't you, Sean? Guaranteed entertainment. The other way that manifests itself, we never, ever know. But, uh, yeah, Aidan, you're so hoping he's not doing his somersaulting tomorrow, Aidan, but you wouldn't put it past him, would you? <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's sort of, he doesn't have a bit of the journey around the Scottish clubs now, hasn't he, really? Obviously, yeah. He was at Hibs, I know that was that was really good to be fair. Uh, he was at Livingston. Mm-hmm. I know he was training he was training with Hamilton. Uh, there's probably another team in there that I've missed. Johnston, well. Dunfermline. Sorry, two of my stars. He loves it. <laughs> Indeed. He actually does, no, he does. He, he loves it here. He says he, he loves it. But... Quarter past twelve kick off tomorrow, is it, gentlemen? Is that right? Half past twelve. Is that aye? Uh, I've got it done at half twelve, but I am often wrong with these things. So I know it's uh, it's on the BBC, isn't it? I it is, I. It's quarter past twelve, Tony. I. Quarter past twelve. Yeah, I thought that. I. Yeah. 
Yeah, because somebody had said half past twelve, but I, I wasn't. Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, twelve fifteen. Yeah. Well, if you're going along, enjoy. Uh, obviously, weekends are result dependent, aren't they? Most. Mm. Whenever Celtic are playing, it's result dependent, isn't it? But we'll be back on Monday to dissect it, have a laugh at our starting 11s or 18s, as, as Sean's now got it, you know, <laughs> starting start 18s, see how many we got right or, or whatever. But look out for that, guys. Uh, we'll be putting that in. It'll feature probably in the newsletter, won't it, Sean? Uh, it'll Saturday be the new, probably the newsletter at about five this evening yeah. and, and also uh, just up on the website as well this uh, evening from something. Look so. out for that if we can actually nail a starting 11 down and get a kind of, uh, yeah, can I think, figure about 11 it's, uh, this is a tricky one, it's always a tricky one <laughs> the first round of the Scottish Cup in January when you come back uh, after the break and, and just talking about rotation and players and no playing but we'll have a go guys eh? that's what's all about, good fun and I'll just direct you to the ticker tape running along the bottom again you know what I'm going to say join us, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe you'll get four months of unlimited access to everything that's written on the website for a pound great value but subscribers new subscribers will also receive that limited edition bespoke a3 artwork from renowned football artists made by frankie and you can as you can see there it's certainly worth owning and having it's callum mcgregor print decent guys isn't it good good deal that Aye, it certainly is. Uh, as I said, been quite popular, which is why it's no longer just the first hundred. We've asked her to do a few more. She says she will. So if you fancied one, say get in, and, get in and get it. Yeah, indeed. Just you know what to do, guys. Click the button www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, and we also say thank you to our Celtic Way Morning Briefing sponsor, the now new sponsor, Seneca Medical Group, and Seneca are the number one here transplant company in Europe and they offer innovative hair restoration treatments and you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description in the video. Now guys, thanks very much for that. First class, thanks for all the comments. Pick a pick an eleven. See if you get it right guys. Do it for fun. You know and, and then come on and slag us as well when we <laughs> woefully wrong. But thank you Aiden. Appreciate it. Always do. Cheers. Thanks Sean. Cheers. First class as always. Take it easy. Have a fabulous Friday, guys. We'll see you all again on Monday. Cheers, guys. Cheers.